Oh, hello. Today we are doing my end of the month wrap up for the month of August 2022. And I feel like this was a good reading month. I got a lot done. I feel like I made, I don't know, like for whatever planning I had, I felt like the plans went well. I made good progress against them. And I don't know, I think I've really gotten back in the mood to read, which has been exciting. I got kind of off my groove sort of late May through early August in terms of just my I don't know if it's like the desire to read exactly, but at least my, huh, I don't even know how to explain it exactly. It wasn't that I wasn't in the mood to read, but I found myself not reaching for books in moments where I would normally expect myself to. And I feel like that that has really changed here in the last couple of weeks, which is just nice because one can only play so much Candy Crush or maybe I'm just the only one left still playing that game. Anyway, uh, let's talk about my stats and some challenges, and then we will talk about my hits, my surprises, and my disappointments for the month. So in August, I read 26 books in total, 24 of which I owned, two of which I did not, for a total number of pages read being 6,839, and the average length of book I read was 263 pages. The average age of book I read was seven years old, and the average amount of time a book had been on my TBR was 10 months. I paid for 50% of the books that I read, and the average cost of those books was $4.35. Genre-wise, my two biggest single ones were fantasy and then speculative romance. I also did have a lot of category and contemporary romance in the mix because I was doing a lot of mass market reading for a vlog you will see at some point. There just were more romances in the mix and there have been the last couple of months, some of which were good and some of which were not. We will talk about that. But yeah, aside from that, we had some mystery. We had different kinds of nonfiction. Uh, we had a horror. Oh, I should mention that I'm finally breaking out horror as its own genre from now on. So I don't know if you guys care about that, but that was a change to the spreadsheet. Uh, but yeah, overall pretty good melange of books. And then in terms of rating, pretty nice little bell curve we've got going there. A lot of 3.5s, but I definitely did have some really big hits, a few four and a halfs, uh, and then a few one and a half to two and a half. Again, see my earlier comment about getting through some of my mass market backlog. So that gave me an average rating for the month of 3.35 stars. Anything over a three is success. Uh, three stars is about a B for me. So yeah, overall, I think a successful month with some highs and lows. Okay, so then in terms of the books that I want to talk to you guys about that I'm not going to talk about in another category, let's start with talking about a few arcs I read. First, I did read Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse, which I would describe as, oh gosh, how, ooh, there's a lot of elements going on here. It is a Western fantasy world with a magic system based in sort of like angels and demons. And then the plot is a whodunit plot. And there is like a interesting romantic element thrown in as well. So it's a novella. And that is a lot for a novella, which is basically my critique. I love Rebecca Roanhorse's writing. I love her imagination and the kind of worlds she builds. I like the kind of stories she seems to be drawn to. So all the elements of this worked for me. I just think that there was too much for a novella uh, and it needed to either have a few things taken out or it needed like about another hundred pages for it to be excellent. But I did still think that this was highly entertaining and I would certainly recommend it. So yeah, if you get a chance, definitely check it out. But I really do wish that it had just been a little bit longer because I think it would have been a lot stronger had it been. But that said, it's a really cool world and there's some interesting character moments, especially by the end. I would be interested in seeing a sequel for this particular one. So I've, I'll manifest that. Now, first I need her to finish the Sixth World series. So Rebecca, if you're listening to this, which I'm sure you are because you hang on my every word, uh, please finish the Sixth World series. And then once you're done with that, come back to this world and give us some more. That's, I'd say, what my wish list is, considering that the final in the Between Earth and Sky series is coming out next year. Like we already know that one's going to be finished. So that's my roan horse wish list there. The other two arcs I read that we haven't already talked about uh, were these two, which I got both of these from Avon. So we have A Merry Little Cuteness by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone and Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. And I actually gave both of these three and a half stars. I would say this is a three and a half verging on a four. This is a three and a half verging on a three. So uh, Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. This, I think I actually feel pretty similarly about this that I felt about the 
the second book, which is I am really into pretty much all of the elements of this, but I don't know if it fully came together for me. I guess that's also what I was saying about Rebecca Roanhorse's book, but I really like the the characters in this in particular. So basically the setup of this, I will give it credit by the way, it ends up being kind of a slow burn romance, like sort of friends to lovers, but it starts as a one night stand and this book starts mid thrust of that one night stand. Like that's literally page one. So if you are, if you hesitate with slow burn because you want them to get back you, like you want to have the the sexy times uh this gives you that from the jump so you get that i think what's cool about this oh sorry i was gonna tell you what this is about so two actors having what she definitely thinks is a one night stand and he thinks is like i really enjoyed this i would like to see her again she leaves sort of without any indication of where she went the next morning before he wakes up and then they run into each other at this like final audition because they are both going to be on the TV show that we have been following throughout this trilogy. Their parts are basically that they're stranded on this island so they're the only two actors really working together and now they're going to work together for like I think six years. He's really frustrated with her that she left the way she did. He's kind of rude to her but like he can't really resist her and eventually like they really do become friends and there's a really lovely sort of like found family element of all the actors the two actors but then all of like the crew who are working on this remote location the other thing is that both of these uh characters are fat and so there's a lot of commentary about sort of like fat people in the entertainment industry especially on-screen talent i really like the way all of that was handled and she particularly our heroine i think is a really like just irresistible force of energy i really really liked her um i love all of the text messages messages like the group chat stuff that we see we get cameos from all of our other previous people that we have met so like I did really like all of the elements of this I don't know that this needed to be as long as it was I think it kind of dragged I, just basically the way that the plot ended up getting executed I don't know I was told if I was totally sold on it but if you like the series, I think you're gonna like this book. I know I did. I really like the two of them together. I, I thought that they had some really good chemistry and I definitely bought them as a couple by the end of it. So yeah, I enjoyed this. I will say that spoiler, spoiler alert remains my favorite of the three, but I think all three of them are well worth picking up. And if I were gonna rank them, I would say spoiler alert, then this one and the second one would be probably my ranking. So yeah, I did really enjoy this and would definitely recommend and I think it's like a worthy finale kind of of, of this series. A Merry Little Meet Cute is such an interesting book tonally because it's got a very specific sense of humor which at times worked for me and at times did not. So I'm kind of torn about how to rate this. I ended up going with a three and a half because I really liked some of the things it was saying about kind of sex workers. So the setup for this one is that there's this producer who usually works in adult films and he is trying to branch out into sort of like a Hallmark type Christmas production wing and through hijinks ends up accidentally putting one of his adult film actresses headshot in with the Christmas movies casting and sh and the director's immediately like her. I really like her energy, like let's use her. So now he's like trying to keep everybody from finding, he, he's basically kept it a secret that he has this other part of his production from the director. He's trying to keep that a secret. Our main character is an adult film actress. So she has that. She also has kind of the equivalent of like an OnlyFans and she, but she originally wanted to be just sort of like an actress generally. So she kind of is seeing this as like an opportunity for her to branch out and then and there's this disgraced boy band guy who is bisexual and had got caught and got caught in sort of like this orgy basically <laughs> and he's trying to like redeem his image so he is like really into her work so he immediately knows who she is and she was you know a big fan of his when she was a teenager so anyway things ensue from there I really the humor worked for me when it was from her point of view like I really love the female main character of this and her family and her best friend like I really all of that worked for me I felt like the dude I think his name was Nolan right that sounds right 
yeah, B and Nolan. He, I felt like his voice was too similar to hers. And so it felt like it was just two of the same character. And his version of that voice didn't work very well for me. So I don't know. I really, I mean, there were moments of this I thought were really funny. I like that this is just a different kind of holiday romance. So for that, I definitely recommend it. But his side of the point of views just didn't, wasn't my favorite. But I think that this is definitely worth checking out because it is different. It was, I think, at times pretty funny. And uh, I did really love, you know, sort of the things it was having to say about sex work and, you know, its place in sort of the overall media firmament. So, yeah, I enjoyed this one. I probably had more problems with it, which is why it was more on a three than the four star of a three and a half, but would still recommend. Okay, and then I did read six Nora Roberts books, one of which we're going to talk more about as a disappointment. So like, let's use that as our segue. But the other ones, I read the first two in the Stanislavski contemporary series. They were both fine. Um, I had issues with both of them in terms of like the of their timeness. one of which is definitely a big spoiler. But I will just say it is difficult for me in a post row world to be down with certain discussions of accidental pregnancy in romance that was conventional for the time. But at this point, it's just difficult for me to read. We'll just leave it there. So I read the first two Stanislavski's. I know that this is a really beloved series. I mean, Nora Roberts writing is always wonderful and super readable. So that was nice. But I can't say that I totally get what the hype is on this. I don't know. Color me mildly underwhelmed. <sighs> and then we have the Donovan Legacy series, which I finished. So I read all four of them. This particular one has captivated and entranced, entranced I DNF'd because it includes a psychic using their powers allegedly to find a missing child. And I just really don't like that in the real world like that I feel like is often a very exploitative setup. So I just DNF'd I couldn't I wasn't interested in that. And then Captivated is the first one. And basically the Donovan Legacy series is this family of hereditary witches from Ireland who have their kind of like next generation. They're all living in Monterey, California. If these had just been contemporaries, I probably would have liked them better. But I just don't love the way that Nora Roberts does her paranormal stuff. It's not my favorite. It always feels very overwrought and purple in the prose. Like I've yet to find a paranora that I loved. Like I've had ones that I was more okay with, but I don't know. So two and a half for Captivated, DNF for Entranced. And then let's segue into our disappointment, shall we? The one I liked best of these was Charmed because it was the one that I thought read the most just like kind of a contemporary with a light magical flavor to it. So that one was fine. I gave that three stars. I gave Enchanted one and a half because this hero was such a jerk. This is the worst rating I've ever given to a Nora Roberts that I finished. I could not deal with the hero. He was such an asshole. I wish that this had been the he had been like the toxic ex that our heroine had to get over to find her actual happily ever after because at the end, she start, starts to stand up to him, which I really liked. And I wish that that had been like the the beginning of an, a new book of her being like, you have treated me like garbage, you have violated my consent with your magic in a way that is not cool. And F you, basically. Like, I wish that that's what had happened. And it wasn't. They just were together and I didn't like it. So that got a one and a half for me and I was hashtag displeased. So I read all four of the Donovan Legacy. I would give this series from Nora Roberts like a two star. The best, the one I liked the best was a three. The one I liked the worst was a one and a half and I DNF'd one of them. So I feel like two stars is probably fair. And I just, I keep holding out hope that someday I will love a Paranora and it just hasn't happened yet. The other disappointment, okay guys, I feel bad saying this. I don't like saying this, but it's just the reality. I did enjoy this book, but relative to the author's oeuvre, it is one of my least favorite in the author's oeuvre, and that is Blood Air by Alona Andrews. Now, I love Alona Andrews. This 
makes me seriously question if I want to do a Kate Daniels reread because I had some problems with this. I still love this because it's Alona Andrews and I enjoyed reading it. I enjoyed being back in the Kate Daniels world. My main, I, I vlogged this in a weekend reading vlog, so if you want to see my full thoughts there, you can. And I'm also going to have a podcast episode up about this at some point. But the bottom line is our main character used to be, so she's the adoptive daughter of Kate Daniels and she used to have her own distinctive flavor back in the Kate Daniels books. Now that she's grown up, she now is just Kate Daniels 2.0, but she's accepting her magic and has a spear instead of a sword. And I don't, while I liked the Kate Daniels vibe, I liked that, that's not who Julie was. And so I don't like that she's just become Kate Daniels. So I don't know, I would, I mean, do I want another book? Obviously I do. Like, of course I do, I, give it to me now. But it's disappointing because I don't know, I, I have appreciated from Hidden Legacy and the second trilogy that Catalina is such a different heroine than the Nevada Kate Daniels type. I have liked seeing a different kind of main character and this just feels like a step backwards. So yeah, I'll have a full podcast up about it at some point, but and I feel very guilty even saying this, but the, 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 this is my truth. My truth is that I just, I didn't love this the way that I hoped I would, but I did still give it three and a half stars. It's still entertaining. If it was not a Alona Andrews book, I probably would have given it four stars, but for an Alona Andrews book, I think it's a three and a half. Okay, and now let's talk about our surprises. So the first surprise I wanted to mention was The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. The reason I wanted to call this out as a surprise is not because I wasn't expecting to like it. I had seen good reviews for this. I was expecting it to be really lovely. It is a historical romance, uh, female female historical romance, and it's very sciencey, which yeah, I love sciencey historical romances. What this made me realize is that I think I should seek out more female female historical romances because yes, there are some historical romance authors whose project I really enjoy. I tend to really like a Lindsay Sands. I tend to really like Tessa Dare. Uh, Martha Waters's point of view tends to work for me. Courtney Mallant, like there's a handful of them. But I think as time has gone on, I've had less and less of an appetite for historical romances because I find the gender power dynamic really uncomfortable oftentimes. If it gets addressed on page, I at least have a little more of an appetite for it, but it just is difficult for me to enjoy the kind of, I don't know, it's just hard for me to detach. And what I liked about this is I got to enjoy the historical setting and some of the kind of, I don't know, historical romances to me are sort of like a very specific flavor of a fantasy world, even though it's rooted in the way things were in the past. I enjoy a historical setting in any book really kind of the same way that I enjoy like a space setting. I don't really think of it, it's not like our world. So it's nice as a little, you know, difference, variety, whatever. And I got to enjoy that world with out some of the gendered issues that I often have at this point in my romance reading life. Um, so this has just made me, it surprised me that that was kind of my biggest takeaway. And this makes me think that I, I have a lot of historical romances right now on my TBR, but the next time that I'm like looking to beef that TBR up, I think I may look for some more female female romances, which I've gotten some recommendations from you guys. So I have some on my radar. But anyway, that was the surprising element of this one. And then the other surprise I wanted to talk about was one of my four and a half star books. And that is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Now I accident. So the reason I put this as a surprise is that this was not on my radar. And I didn't even realize that the book was coming out. I had been doing a catch up of some financial, the financial diet content. I hadn't watched a lot of their stuff from the last few months. So I was doing sort of like a deep dive of catching up. And there was a really, really interesting um, interview between Chelsea Fagan and Jeanette McCurdy talking about sort of the financial element of her story. And I didn't, I didn't watch iCarly. Like I'm not a Jeanette, I didn't, I honestly didn't even know who Jeanette McCurdy was, which dates me. I think I was about five years too old to have really been into her. I'm like a half generation too old to have like really connect with who she is and you know, her deal. But I really liked her and I thought her story was super interesting. And so when she mentioned that she had a book coming out, I thought that the book had already come out. I went and looked it up and was like, oh no, it's like about to come out. This happens to be very timely. So I pre-ordered the audio and I did not realize it was gonna be such a huge hit. Like it has been sold out everywhere. I basically just didn't expect this book to be such 
such a hit because I didn't really have any context for her as a star. And then I also didn't expect for how much I would love this book and how like it's probably one of my favorite celebrity memoirs I've read. Now I think that it starts to drag a little bit towards the end and I can tell that the earlier parts of the book, I think she had a one woman show at some point and it seems to me like the earlier parts of the book are more like thought through or have been workshopped more. So there's that. But I just thought that this was an incredibly, I like that this had such a strong point of view for a celebrity memoir of a very specific, here's the lens through which I'm viewing my experience. And I thought that this was just such an indictment of child entertainers in general. This is an, a conversation I've been really interested in vis-a-vis -vis family vlogging in the context of YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. There's some super dark stuff that I'm not going to get into in this video associated with that, but one of the still bad but less dark aspects of it is just the fact that there is no regulation for this. So the way that Jeanette McCurdy at least had like some money when she turned 18 from the work that she had done, there are no protections for children who are a part of like social media media, you know, media empires and whose life is being documented in this way. And just I think increasingly as those children come of age, we're going to be finding out more and more some of like the horrors of what have happened to some of those kids. But I just really like this as really specifically talking about the realities of being a child star who didn't particularly want to be one, but it was a part of her finan her family's financial plan. If Jeanette can be a star, she can really like save us from borderline poverty. I mean, I think that there were some really interesting frank discussions about that part. I think the kind of psychology of her mother is really interesting and she chooses to tell it basically like with her as a child and growing up. So like as the book goes on, it originally her perception of her mother is very much one way and it's from the perspective of a child of that age who doesn't have insight yet into some of the significance of the things that her mother is doing. But as she ages she does have more insight and she is able to make more connections and she's more aware of sort of the reactions of the people around her mother to her mother. So it's a, just a very interesting look into both sort of the child star aspect of it but really just like what abusive parenting especially abusive maternal parenting looks like and I just thought it was really really introspective like I f it felt like a book that is a product of a lot of work like internal work from someone and I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really well done memoir. There's a lot of sort of, you know, the title is intentionally provocative, but I think that it also just opens up the door of saying like, of, of kind of having a hard conversation about, you know, we have this really weird position we put mothers in in our culture of both idolizing them, but then also like completely not valuing the true work that they do. And I think that she's really kind of purposely poking at our sort of idolization of mother as archetype and reflecting on like, yeah, if my mother hadn't have died when she did, I mean, I don't know that she would have been alive, guys. Like, I think that if, if Jeanette's mother had lived, Jeanette may not be with us anymore. So just like having that moment of like, not that she wished her dead, but just saying like, I, my life is now where it is probably because she died. And I think that is kind of what the book explore. That is sort of the underlying hypothesis and she spent the book is evidence supporting why she feels the way she does. So I just think it's really thought-provoking and like I could see this being a super good book club kind of book. Um, I will say all the content warnings like just pick a content warning and this probably means it in terms of essay and child abuse and emotional verbal abuse and PDs and substance abuse like uh, just pick it. It's there. So um, it's a hard read but I think it's really thought-provoking and would make for a very good like discussion based pick. And it's really cool to me that it's doing so well because I think that it's an example of a celebrity memoir that's actually worth reading as a memoir as opposed to just like for the salacious behind the scenes tea. That's not kind of the vibe of it. It's much more introspective than I think a lot of celebrity memoirs end up being. So anyway, that was a big surprise to me. I wasn't expecting to, I, I wasn't expecting that a book I had been interested in from a random piece of media would actually end up being like a big bestseller <laughs> and like very timely, but also wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. And then all three of my hits I talked about at length in a vlog. 
So I will mostly refer you to there, but I did want to mention them in particular here. So first of all, the Agatha Christie Marple 12 New Mysteries collection. I could have put this as a surprise because I honestly wasn't sure how I was going to do with this. But overall, I actually found this to be incredibly entertaining. And I really liked the sort of polyphonic approach to the Marple character with a bunch of different perspectives, a bunch of different takes on the character. I think that if what you want is more Marple exactly like like Christy wrote her. I just think that's an unreasonable expectation and you're going to be disappointed by this and by anything that is done. And if you're of the position that it just shouldn't be done, I understand and respect that. But I think for granting that they've decided to do this, and therefore that it will not be exactly like what Christy did, I think that this is a really successful attempt at doing that. Much more successful in my opinion than the Sophie Hanna Poirot book that I read. I think that this is a lot better of an approach. There were a couple of stinkers in here, but for the most part, I found this to be really entertaining and I'm very pleased to be able to report that. So if you go in with the right expectations, I think that this is one you could really enjoy. Uh, the other two four and a half stars, so first of all, Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. Unsurprisingly, this is fantastic. The other collection I read from Ted Chiang was also fantastic. He is just a complete master of the speculative literary short story form. So many great examples of what he does in this. My favorite and one of my all-time favorite short stories I would say is Hell is the Absence of God. I thought that that was the full standout for me but just overall this is a great collection unsurprisingly and if you like a speculative literary short story I highly recommend this. And now I just need him to come out with another collection because I think I've read both of the collections he's put out. And then last again this could have probably been a surprise but Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This is my first T. Kingfisher and I absolutely love this. It was a little slow getting started but once we got into it man the interesting tonal slash genre melange that is this book I just was totally won over by it. It's justified my impulse to hoard books from T. Kingfisher and I'm just gonna lean into that fully at this point because I've proven that I like at least <laughs> <laughs> of what she does and uh, I'm just gonna she's got a huge backlist she's very prolific and I am just leaning into it fully. I totally love this and if you're looking for a dark fairy tale type vibe that also has some humor and some romance and a very on the text metaphor about domestic violence, then I would recommend this. I just really, really love this. So you can see my full thoughts in my mood reading vlog that I did. And then you can see full thoughts about the two short story ones in the short story vlog that I did this month. So yeah, those were the hits. So that was my August reading. I, as you can see, had a lot of a lot of things to say, a lot of good momentum this month. So definitely let me know how your reading went in August. Let me know what you thought about any of the books that I talked about, if you've read them or are interested in reading them. Whatever you want to tell me, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon.